Rain, Rain by Anne Martin Chapter 6 Who I Wait For Uncle Weldon drives me to and from school every day. He does this because I'm no longer allowed to ride the bus, and when my father heard about that, he announced that he couldn't drive me himself. He said, Rose, what did you go and get yourself kicked off the bus for? How am I supposed to drive you to school in the morning and get to the garage at the same time? And how am I supposed to pick you up in the middle of the afternoon while I'm working? There are a lot of days when there's no work for my father at the J&R garage, but on those days, he likes to sleep late and then go to the luck of the Irish. Uncle Weldon said, I could drive Rose to school. Uncle Weldon works at a construction company. He has what my father calls a wuss job and what Uncle Weldon calls a desk job. He doesn't do construction. He sits at a computer. His job starts at 9 a.m. so he could easily drop me off at my school, which starts at 8.42 a.m. before going to his company, which is called Jeans Construction, Incorporated. He said he would ask his boss if he could work through his lunch break so that he could pick me up at 2.42 p.m. and run me home every afternoon. When Uncle Weldon mentioned that he could drive me to school, he didn't look directly at my father. He and my father and Rain and I were sitting on the front porch, and Uncle Weldon stared out at Hud Road while he spoke. I waited for my father to say, I can take care of this myself. But instead, he lit a cigarette and stared at Hud Road, too. So then I joined them in looking at the road while I said to my father, Did your father drive you to school? He didn't have to. I didn't get kicked off the bus. Why are you asking about my father? I was asking because my father always says that he's not going to be the kind of father that his father was. He says he's going to raise me up by himself if it kills him. This is why he doesn't accept much help from Uncle Weldon, and this is why Uncle Weldon asked him questions so carefully. When my father thinks Uncle Weldon is interfering in my raising, he threatens to keep us apart, which would make my uncle and me feel very sad. I don't know, I said. Rain was lying next to me on the old couch that my father had put out on the porch. She rolled over on her back and rested her head in my lap. You asked me a question, but you don't know why you asked it, said my father. Yes. What about it? Uncle Weldon wanted to know. Could I drive her? It would solve the problem. It wouldn't mean you're a bad father, I said. Uncle Weldon shifted his gaze from Hud Road to me, and his eyes opened wide. That is certainly not what I meant. Well, anyway, I don't see another way around it, replied my father. And that is how Uncle Weldon started driving me to and from Hatford Elementary. Every morning, Rain and I wait on the front porch for my uncle to come along, head road in his black Chevrolet Montana. When I see the truck, I kiss Rain on her head and put her inside the house. Then I climb up beside my uncle and tell him if I've thought of any new homonym since the day before. If I have, Uncle Weldon says, that's great. Then we try to think of other new homonyms that sound like the new pair, the way I did with Choose Choose and Bruise Bruise. After we discuss homonyms, we look out the window for a while, and then Uncle Weldon will say, Everything all right with your father and Rain? The least complicated answer is yes. I don't say more unless I have to. Sometimes Uncle Weldon will say, Would you like to go to a movie with me this weekend, Rose? Or maybe, should we take Rain on a hike on Saturday? Then we have to think about how to ask my father for permission. Finally, we drive up in front of Hatford Elementary. Uncle Weldon and I always cross our fingers and touch our hearts before I slide out of the truck. At the end of the day, I wait for my uncle again. I stand by the front door of the school and watch the kids I used to ride the bus with as they line up for bus number seven. I step away from Monty Soderman, who is missing one one fingernail, and who wears very heavy boots that hurt a lot when he steps on my toes' toes. I wait, wait, and hum, and stand by myself, and stare, stare, straight, straight ahead so that I can see, see Uncle Weldon the moment he turns onto school lane, lane. Then I run to his truck, and he smiles as he leans across the seat to open the door for me. 
Sometimes we have a conversation like this. Uncle Weldon, how is school? Rose Howard, it was just like yesterday. Uncle Weldon, exactly like yesterday? Rose Howard, no, that would be impossible. Uncle Weldon, because today has a different date from yesterday? Rose Howard, and because the moon and stars are in different positions than yesterday. Uncle Weldon, what's the most interesting thing you learned today? Rose Howard, that if you assign numbers to the letters in Weldon, like 23 for W because it's the 23rd letter in the alphabet, and 5 for E, and 12 for L, and 4 for D, and 15 for O, and 14 for N, the numbers add up to 73. Guess what 73 is? Uncle Weldon, a prime number? Rose Howard, yes. And that is special as a homonym. My father's name is a prime number, too. W-E-S-L-E-Y comes out to 89. Uncle Weldon, really? Rose Howard, yes, but I don't think he'll be interested. Uncle Weldon, well, I'm glad your father and I have prime number names, since you and Rain have homonym names. Now nobody will feel left out. Rose Howard, I wonder if my father would let me come over to your house on Saturday. I could rewrite my homonyms list. It's getting crowded. Uncle Weldon, would you like me to ask him about that? Rose Howard, yes, but just ask if I can come over. Don't mention the list. Uncle Weldon, I'll do what I can. Fingers, finger crosses, heart touches, I wave goodbye to my uncle.